So if you ever wondered if technicians can actually read, here's proof. And there's not even a whole lot of pictures. There's only a couple on each there's page. There's a few. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to talk about something a lot of Jeep owners go through. Especially guys when you're lifting up your rigs and you got bigger tires on. Steering oscillation. There's another name for it. I'm not allowed to use it. But basically when your Jeep goes like that. It's not fun. Super scary. So we're here at Four Wheel Parts. They're going to go over why it's happening on my JT. They're going to explain what we're going to use to fix it. And yeah, it's going to be uh, better than new. As you can see, they're already ripping into it. So let's go and figure out what happened, how we're going to fix it, and let's get it on. So everybody, this is Fred. Fred's going to explain to us what's going on with my Gladiator. And same problems with the JLs, obviously. Same front end. But he's going to explain to you why I'm having the steering oscillation. So we did a front inspection on Lance's uh, Jeep here and we found, uh, first thing, his steering stabilizer is cavitated so it wasn't operating at optimum it can be so it wasn't allowing for full steering damping and also when we did a steering inspection, uh, dry steering on the hoist, we found play in his uh, upper and lower drag link ends as well as his outer tie rod ends. Now with those being loose and especially with the big tires he's running, uh, that's all steering input taken away from the driver uh, as you hit rough roads uh, Even if you're holding the steering wheel straight If you're playing your steering components, you're gonna get some play going on the road which eventually led to his steering oscillation so we are doing a bunch of upgrades today and uh, We will show you what we were putting in here momentarily Okay, and so real quick, for those that are watching, what size nut was that? Uh, 21's on the end, you got a 19 in the middle. 21 on the end, 19 metal cloak, okay. Now I'm removing the drag link end now at the knuckle. Uh, it's 21 on both ends, so at the top you'll need a ratchet wrench or a wrench. Uh, bottom I hit with an impact. All that. So we're just removing the uh, aftermarket stabilizer bracket here. It's a 19 on both sides. We've got a new uh, updated bracket, so we're not going to be needing this one. Track bar bolt's 21. So we're removing the upper track bar bolt here. He's got an aftermarket synergy steering brace, which means 22 on the bolt head and a 21 on the nut. So we're just pulling apart the adjuster in the tie rod end here. Uh, we're going to cover it with some copper-based anti-seize. Just keeps it from getting seized up in the winter months. A very harsh winter up in Canada. They like to cover our roads with salt. That increases corrosion tenfold. Uh, so doing this helps prevent that a little bit. That way when you have to do an alignment in the future, uh, you're able to. So just while we're talking about Synergy parts, they've actually upgraded their rod ends in the past year or so. Uh, they've got a lot less flexibility to them now, so they have a lot less rotation, about 30 degrees less. Uh, that makes them stronger and makes them last longer. Uh, these ones are also greasable. They've got a real nice boot on them. And they come with a castle nut, which is a lot safer than the factory uh, nylon. All right. In action! Oh. <laughs> so we're throwing in the drag link from really close perspective. <laughs> really close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why are we starting with the top first? Is uh, it just for comfort or? Yeah, it just makes it easier. Okay. So now this uh, drag link is capable of being set up in a high steer position with a drill out through your knuckle. Uh, we're not doing that today. We're just replacing it in the factory configuration. So you're gonna to wanna to point it straight up. Oh, it's left thread. But I'm steered all the way left. Okay, and we found out that the torque specs on these bolts are what, on these nuts? Uh, so the torque specs 55 foot pounds, and then for the actual adjusting clamp bolts, 90. Once you got it installed, Castle nut down, cotter pin flipped over. That's pretty much the way it should look like when you're done. Oh. Once again. I can't see where it is. Uh, he loves to drop everything first and then install it. It's like his go-to move. It's just part of who I am. Yeah, it, it, it's better that way. 
<laughs> right? Teach them a lesson at first and then be sweet to them later. Look, look at my final product. No, don't watch me do it. So I just started these down. I'm going to torque them up again. Uh, it's 22 mil nut, all four of them. And uh, we're going to torque all rod ends to 55 foot pounds. Check if your bolt lines up. Oh, it's pretty close. Should be able to get a cotter pin through. So we're doing the same thing on this side. And there's a bolt that goes through here. Uh, when you lock that down, it'll stop the bar from pitching up and down. Uh, we're going to tighten that down while it's on the alignment rack. We're going to torque it to 90 foot pounds. Uh, while it's in the air, you can't really tell where it's got to sit, so we're going to wait until it's sitting on the ground. Okay, so as you can see with the wheel, the weight that the actual rotor is pointing, the, uh, it, it's pointing way on the inside, and if you come over to this one, it's pointing very toed in as well. So what we're doing is we need to find the measurement from here to here centered on the factory shaft. And we measured that out and it came up to it was 60 and 7 eighths. 60 and 7 eighths on mine. Maybe yours will be a little bit different. It's good to measure it. So again, we're measuring from the center of here to the center of here to give us a rough estimate of what we're looking at. And then once we get to the alignment rack, we'll go over and kind of adjust it from there. We'll fine tune it at that point. Okay, so on this one, what's our measurement again? Uh, we're looking for 41 and 5 eighths right now. We're at about 40 and 3 quarters, so we're going to have to extend it out a bit. So the nice thing about these Synergy drag link and tie rod is they have a hex nut on them instead of the factory uh, spline adjuster. Uh, this actually takes an inch and a quarter wrench. Uh, makes it a lot easier to get it unstuck if it's ever seized. Makes it a lot easier to make your adjustments. Much better than using pliers. Okay, so as you're installing it as well, it's an easy mess up to do. This has a bow in it on this side and it's straight on that side. Make sure you have it, the bow flush, flat to the ground. And then it's also on this side, the diff side. Cause if you don't, eh, it's gonna be on that side, then you're gonna hit your pumpkin and it's just, it's not gonna work out right. right so we're just throwing the track bar back in now. Uh, we're gonna start with this end. The other end's gonna hang until the Jeep's back on the ground. Uh, this is the new steering stabilizer stud that comes with the Synergy kit. Uh, here's the other uh, trap bar bracket, or sorry, tie rod bracket. Uh, we're just going to hammer this down right now. Alright, so we're installing these little misalignment spacers with his Rubicon NF NFS steering stabilizer. It stands for Neutral Force Stabilizer. Uh, this stabilizer will always return to the center position as opposed to pushing all the way out or just being neutral. Uh, so these misalignment spacers help keep the heim joint in rotation, it allows it to move back and forth. So it has hind joints in it. Yeah, yeah, they call them a mono ball just from Rubicon Express, but you can see on the end there, it's full oh. articulation. Right on. We're gonna throw a little bit of Loctite on the bolt just so it doesn't back off on us. I'm gonna try not to throw this one on the ground. Yay. I did it. <laughs> Something didn't end up on the floor. <laughs> I'm a lucky boy. Just tightened up a little bolt. Uh, the whole stud's a 21 millimeter. Uh, uses the same factory flag nut that you had from your stock track bar. And then the Allen key bolt on the front is a five millimeter. All right, so we're throwing together the other end now. Uh, I got my misalignment spacer in there. One on the bottom with the little rubbers. Another washer. Now, does it matter which one you go into? Well, it's only gonna thread into one. The other one's for a bigger bolt if you have a different diameter. Oh, okay. Uh, Ran into that issue with the it was a JL. I had to get a different size. So we're just snugging up the clamp here, uh, just to make it the alignment rack. We're going to fine tune it over there. Uh, Rubicon Express is that you need to have four between four and four and a quarter inches of shaft exposed in the centered position. So we're going to fine tune that after, but we're at about four inches right now. So we just hung the tires. Uh, we just zip them down. We're going to torque it. Uh, while it's on the ground, we're going to reinstall this track bar at the top. Uh, Pulling your steering wheel back and forth to help you align that. Uh, and then we're going to head over to the alignment rack and fine tune everything. Alright, so we're all done work on Lance's Jeep here. Uh, we installed the new Synergy tie rod and drag link as well as the Rubicon Express NFS stabilizer. Uh, so on the alignment rack here, all we've done, we've greased it, we set his toe, we straightened the steering wheel. And we actually dropped down the caster a little bit just to accommodate for the steering oscillation. Uh, having a higher set caster does tend to make steering oscillation worse if it happens. Uh, it's not going to prevent it though. Uh, other than that, we're ready to go for a test drive. Make sure everything's good and straight. Make sure the steering wheel's straight. And if it's not, we'll straighten it back up.
and we're good to go. All right, guys. Well, that's it. She's all done up. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, safety rules in Canada. <sighs> Can't even see you. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys appreciate the video and enjoy it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll ask these guys to answer them because uh, honestly on this one, I got no clue. All right, see you next time. <laughs>